Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and in this video we're going to look at smiley dimple locks, how to pick them, how they work, what they are, and, well, unfortunately for this particular lock, we're even going to saw one apart and uh, see what is on the inside. I found very little in terms of resources in, uh, that show what's going on inside these locks, so I'm going to sacrifice this lock so we can all see and learn from it. First up, what is a smiley dimple lock. Well, first of all, let's go back a bit and say what's a dimple lock. You might have seen a standard pin tumbler uh, with its keyway, which is vertical, standard key, and this is what we call a, a standard pin tumbler lock. Now look at a dimple lock. All of a sudden we've gone from a vertical to a horizontal keyway, whichever way it's mounted, and the keys are flat and offer a bitting which is very similar to that of a standard pin tumbler. It's still got the ups and downs across here, but it's uh, probably less pronounced across a flatter key. It can also contain, because it's of its flat nature, multiple pins. This one in particular has two rows of uh, five pins, making it a 10 pin lock. Dimple locks are often a high security lock. Not necessarily the case with smiley dimple locks. These are nearly always made um, in East Asia and have a very particular, um, you could still say horizontal keyway, but it's on the curve. It looks like it's smiling at you. The key itself is also curved, but does offer up, again, a similar bitting to what you see in a standard pin tumbler lock. It still operates key pins, still has driver pins in there. Um, and again, you can see, just compare, there's still ups and downs in the keyway uh, across the center part of the key itself. When you're tensioning a standard pin tumbler, you've got loads of different options. You might want to go what they call um, away from pins or bottom of the keyway with a tension tool like this. You might go top of the keyway with a bit of bent wiper blade or pin side, if that's the terminology of your choice. You might even utilize a pry bar and all of those will provide a turning force on the core torque so you can bind the pins in turn and pick the lock. In a smiley dimple lock like this, however, our choice of tension tools are somewhat reduced. Let's have a look at the bottom of the keyway tension tool in a standard Yale type lock like this. And you'll see that as I put the tool in, I can turn it and it pushes against the core and turns the lock. That's perfect for tensioning. What if I did that on a smiley dimple keyway like this? Well, if I put this in, you'll see that it has an unfortunate contact point. One, it ever so slightly occludes the keyway, not a big deal because we can still get in there, but look where the tension tool uh, touches on the outer part of the core. All I'm doing there is I'm turning the tool against this piece of metal, I'm not turning the inside. That's not what we want. The best ways that I found for tensioning these locks are to use something like one of these pry bars. This is a 0.8 millimeter, and I can put that in here and then use my thumb to pull up. So essentially what I'm doing is I am putting this tool in like this, and I am pulling, I'll put it as an angle so you can see, I'm pulling up like this on the core. So I'm not actually trapping the tension tool against the outer part of the core, I'm literally just pulling up on it. That's one way. Another favorite way for me is to use one of these uh, wafer lock tension tools. There's plenty of manufacturers that do something similar, um, sometimes known as a wire wrench, and you can put these in and you get quite good control over the core. What you're actually doing there is, and I'll show you up close on this one, is you can see how, again, you're not really touching the outer part of the core and you've got good control over the lock. Before we start picking these locks, let me just show you how the key operates and you'll see that it actually rotates around in a slight curve and then it releases the shackle. So the first way we're going to learn to pick this lock is using a dimple flag. They're called flags because they look like little flags. This is a right-handed one because it's pointing to the right when I'm looking at it from this angle. I'm going to use the pry bar because a lot of pickers have pry bar type tools in their kits. We're going to pull the core at an angle not straight up, but at an angle um, to provide tension. And we're going to use a dimple flag just like we would a hook, but we're going to rotate it instead of lifting it. So I would relax the tension, go to the back because I prefer to 
start picking at the back, just out of choice. You can start from the front if you like and find any binding pins and lift them. So five felt that bind, uh, two felt that bind, and we just lifted it up. Oh, just going to see if there's anybody else who needs to be lifted. Just test those front pins which can be quite high and you can see we have an open. There we go. Another way to attack these locks is just by using a simple rake. As long as it's slim shanked, you use something like a snake rake. I'm going to be using this wire wrench tool just to make a change and when you're using your rake you can put it all the way down straight down the front like this and you can lift the pins quite high or even angle the tool like this so you can angle and just scrub the bottom of the pins like this. So you've got a range of movement there. You can even bypass the pins and go to the back. If you say got some pins set in the middle, you want to avoid, you might want to just rotate that tool round and go around them. So you see, I've got a nice bit of control over the core. I'm going to go in. Again, uh, I, I like to start at the back, but it's up to you how you do it. And uh, just put some light tension on and give it a, a bit of scrub. Go around any pins which feel sort of set. And we'll work on the front couple of pins here. And then we can, oh, we've got an open, look at that. For fun, I swapped out to a different lock, still the smiley dimple lock, and we're going to look at um, these rakes. Now, these can be used on wafer locks, um, they're automotive rakes. You find them in this Goso 24 piece kit that's very popular. They're not made out of particularly good material, but they are quite useful. And again, you can use these uh, as rakes. You just put them down the, the keyway and apply tension and, and give it um, a, a little rake. And there we go. We have it, we have it all open very, very useful tools. Now I think it would be a good idea to get an angle grinder to this and get it open and see what's on the inside. So here's the core itself and here's the key. Excuse the grubby fingers, but this thing was filthy on the inside. Very well used, well oiled lock. Um, if I put the key in, it'll work as normal. The inner core moving on the inside of the outer core and you'll see here that they're held together by this press fit pin. It does two jobs, stop the inner core from coming out, but also make sure that it can't over rotate past about 90 degrees. There we go. To get this core out, I'll probably have to grind this little inner pin off and that'll allow us to see a bit more on the inside of the lock. I might do that in a second, but for now that's feature one. Feature two is something which will run on the inside of the lock all the way down um, from here to here and that is this sidebar. You can see the little tail bit peeking out there. What does that do? Well, at the moment you can see that sidebar sits between the inner and the outer. If I put the tip of the key in, that is what's stopping the whole thing from moving. The sidebar is blocking the core from moving because it's stuck between the inner and outer. What's stopping it from recessing into the inner? It's the key pins themselves, I think. I think this is driverless. I'll test it out by um, taking the outer off in a minute. But if you can just look down on the inside, you'll see that this key pin actually has a groove. I've got the tip of my pick in it, can you see? And that groove there, when lifted to the correct height, will correspond with the height of this sidebar. Imagine that's the same for all five pins. I assume there's five pins in this one. Then all those key pins with the grooves in will be lifted to the right height. That will allow this sidebar, you can see I'm pressing it with the tip of the pick now, look it's moving under spring, it'll allow it to slip out of this groove into the holes, or well not holes, the grooves in the key pins, and allow the lock to open. To show you that in more detail, I'll try to remove or grind off this little pin here. We should then be able to push out this inner, and you'll see the sidebar and key pin assembly. As you can see, I ground away that retaining pin, which means I think we should just be able to, yep, there we go, remove the inner core from the outer core, and then you can see, yes indeed, we have 
our sprung sidebar. Let me just remove that and show you that all it is is a bar with a spring and it slides into the side of the lock. You'll look down here and you'll see the groove that runs all the way down on the inside there and that aligns with this sidebar which as you can see will will not go into the inner core unless all those pins are at the right height. Let's put in the, there you go, the key as if it was inside the lock and you'll see that that now will depress all the way down. If I take the key off, it actually won't um, depress all the way down at all. It will stick out by about half a millimeter or so. Put the key on again like this and you'll see as it goes all the way down completely. So that's how the sidebar is working. Now let's try to remove a couple of these pins. I'll take the sidebar off, put that there, and tap these pins out if I can. They should come out, I'm hoping. Maybe they just need a little coaxing with a, uh, a pair of tweezers. Unless they're somehow, no, 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 we got them. And there we go. So this is pin number one. And you can see that, yep, yeah, indeed, very, very dirty, but there is the groove. That is where this sidebar will retract into when it's lifted to the right height. So you see that groove is cut out specifically so that um, when it's lifted to the right height, the sidebar can recess into it. Uh, allowing it to come out of the groove on the inside of the outer core and the whole thing to um, come undone or rotate around, should I say. And uh, there'll be little spring, oh, very grubby little springs in here as well. We can pull all of these out. Let's just do that quickly so we can see them all. And these tiny little springs, they're really gummed up in there. As you'd imagine, that's number six, that's number five. Get these little springs out if we can. There we go. And that's what we have. We have, you can see that the grooves on the key pins on this driverless lock are all at different heights depending on the um, the cut of the key, so the ones where they're really high up don't need to be pushed up as high in the lock. The ones which are lower down, these need to be pushed up a little higher to align. Um, and so there you go. In case you didn't know, these smiley dimple locks are actually sidebar locks, and you can feel where the sidebar is by using a shim. They're driverless, so the shim can't be used for front shimming um, the lock, but if you can slide it down, and get them in, these are quite tight. Side a shim down on the inside, you'll see that I'll be able to go all the way down at the top. And then on this side, I won't be able to go down at all um, after a certain point. So again, it seems that the shim go around. You'll see that there is where that sidebar is. And you can feel it. It's only gone in by about that much. So all the way around here, you'll be able to, on this side, it'll only go down as far as where the retaining pin is. The thing which we saw earlier to stop it rotating more than 90 degrees. The one side you can feel the pin. Then there's a big gap where nothing much happens at the top all the way around to the other side where you can feel where the sidebar is. And only when the key is put in or it's picked can you push the shim down even further because um, the, the whole sidebar has to re recess into the pins before a shim will be inserted. So there you go, that's um, a pretty detailed, albeit short rundown of those smiley dimple locks, how to tension them, how to pick them and what's actually going on on the inside. Um, they are they don't have driver pins, they have a sidebar there uh, and they're kind of cool. Anyway, I like them, I hope you like them too. If you like this video, leave a like. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing, it really helps me out and of course I'll see you all next time.